Hi, I'm Amy, this is the Opinionated Woman, and welcome to my really gay TV R. Um, <laughs> so this is the first video that it will be kicking off all of my Pride content. I'm going to be making a lot of it. Um, you can see here, here is my collection of all of the gay books that I own. It's a pretty decent collection considering I've only been sort of accruing queer books for uh, like the last like two years or so. Um, and that is what I'm going to be trying to read this month. Um, so I've got, got me a little collection of queer books that I'm going to dip into. I'm not saying that I'm going to read all of these books, not fuck. Um, I also have a TBR on script, which I'll get to later, but th these are all the queer physical books that I've got going, uh, that I've got available to me, and I'm just going to pick them up at my leisure. So, if we start from the top, put this down. we've got a classic, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Um, some of these books are going to have queer stories, some of them are going to be queer writers, some of them are going to be both. Uh, this one, you know... <laughs> This is such a famous book by such a famous author. Do I know what it's about? No. <laughs> but do I know that Oscar Wilde is a gay icon? Yes. So is that why I'm going to be reading it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then I've got How to Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar. Um, this, all I know is that it is super weird. And that it's sci-fi. I had so many people reading this last um, last year and talking about how amazing it was and how freaking weird it was and none of them could, could actually discuss what it was about really. <laughs> so I am really happy to go into this one. I love the cover. French flaps. It's super short so I'm really intrigued as to what this one's. I'm definitely going to get to this one. Then when it comes to middle grade I've got two. Pet by Craig K. Mizzy and Love Frankie by Jacqueline Wilson. Pet is a middle grade novel about a non-binary character written by a non-binary author. Again, tried not to have too much that I actually know about this book before going into it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just, comp I know there's something to do with monsters and that is it. I'm keeping myself blind. I'm going into it as blind as possible. This is probably going to be the first one I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick this up tomorrow on the 1st of June. First, uh, I'm filming this on the 31st and then this is going up on the 1st. So yeah, I'm picking this up today for you guys <laughs> and I'm super excited to get to it. Um, the group book for the Queer Lit Readathon, which I will be participating in too from the 6th to the 12th. Uh, this is the bingo board. Um, I'm going to be uh, using books to like hit a bunch of different um, prompts on there, but the one prompt I'm not going to be able to hit is the group book, which is Freshwater by Craig K. Mizzy. And I read that book earlier this year and I don't have a physical copy, so I'm probably not going to be rereading it, but I would highly recommend getting to that and at least I'm getting to something from this author. Then Love Frankie, this is the first. Uh, like woman love and woman romance that uh or like story that Jacqueline Wilson has ever told especially since she uh, after she came out herself so I'm super excited about this one a lesbian book by Jacqueline Wilson I bought it without a doubt <laughs> like using a voucher I don't buy books that willy-nilly but I'm super super excited to get into this one then I have a YA which uh Novel told in verse with illustrations, which is the Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Um, this is about a queer boy that is finding out about his identity and about his sexuality through the medium of drag. And it looks gorgeous. Like, oh my god, no doubt I'm going to be getting to this one. I think it's going to be a really quick read. And it is absolutely stunning. So I'm very excited for that one. Like, maybe just say that I'm excited for all of these, because <laughs> otherwise I'm just going to be ending up saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> then, on a bit of a different tangent, I have Spring by Ali Smith. So this is part of her seasonal quartet. Um, this is not necessarily going to be a queer story. This story is set... Oh god, which one is this set during? Basically, she writes about the period of time that she is living in. So one of them was like focused during Brexit and one during the American election, stuff like that. I'm not sure which one this falls in. I just know it's part of the quartet and I love her writing. Ellie Smith is also an iconic queer writer. 
So I think this book falls under there. Even if the story isn't necessarily queer, she is a really essential writer to be reading and her writing is like no other I've ever, ever read before. So it'll definitely uh, change up how I'm reading because I'm trying to read as diversely as possible when it comes to gender, sexual orientation, um, and when it comes to the genres. So this will be a literary fiction that I get to that is completely different from the rest, but yeah, another by a super duper great queer author. And then to really diversify, I have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I have only ever read a novella by N.K. Jemisin. I found this in a secondhand bookstore. I was super excited because I've been trying to pick up her Broken Earth trilogy for the longest time. And apparently there are multiple queer characters in here. And I just had it on my shelves anyway. So I was like, sick, let's get to it. This is a sci-fi um, sci fantasy where um, the different boroughs of the city, uh, of the city of Manhattan, get personified and again that's all I know about it and I've heard nothing but rave reviews, rave reviews about this book. And then the final one that I will be reading consistently as I go through the month at the same time as other books is The Pink Line by Marco Fisser. Um, Marco Fisser is a South African author and this book is um, following different queer stories from different people living in different countries like and the the way their lives differ depending on their circumstances, whether that be money-wise, um, their, their orientation, the country that they live in, their laws to do with queer history, stuff like that. So this is just following uh, LGBT rights across the world and following different case studies that he did. And so I'm going to read the case studies one by one interspersed with all the rest of the books. I've been so excited to get to this. I read an interview I mean, I watched and uh, I listened to an interview with him on a podcast from the Book Lounge, which is a bookshop here in Cape Town, which is very, very queer focused. So if you're looking for queer books and you're in Cape Town, the bookshop is the place to go. And this one I'm amped for. Then when it comes to audiobooks, uh, I've just got, so like with the, the physical books, I've just got a collection of books that are in my head that I would like to get to potentially. So I'll finish a book feel what I'm feeling, like what I feel like listening to at that moment in time, and that's what I'll pick up. So the first one is Phoenix Ever After by Case and Calendar. When I saw that that popped up on script, I gasped out loud like a drama queen. <laughs> I've heard so many good things. It's about a trans uh, protagonist uh, experiencing their first love for the first time, obviously. Um, and it sounds incredible. So many people had it on their base, uh, base books of last year. So I really want to get to that one. But then the first one that I'm going to pick up uh, today for you guys is Loveless by Alice Oseman. Because I really, as I said, want my reading to be diverse. And Loveless covers a, um, a so an identity that's, that's underrepresented quite a lot, which is asexuality. And I'm super interested to read it. I saw Gabby Reed's reading it last year and she thinks that she falls on the A spectrum and seeing the effect that it had on her, just being able to see herself in a book like this, I thought it was incredibly powerful. So I want to get in on that and see. Um, I've only ever read uh, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, so I am really excited to try another one of hers, especially about a topic that is so uh, interesting and underrepresented. Ah, oh, Hugo. Sorry about that, my dog knocked my fucking tripod. Um, then I am definitely another one I'm definitely going to get to is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a memoir by a non-binary author about yeah, their experiences and um, their life coming out as a non-binary person and the things that that changed for them. Basically, it's a memoir. <laughs> it's a memoir by a non-binary author. I've heard so many amazing things. The first person that recommended this not directly to me obviously but in a video was JC from Brotas and Books and they raved about it I think it was the last Pride so I'm super excited to get into that one um, I think it's gonna be really poignant and really beautiful then from a fantasy standpoint I want to read The Blackwater Sister by Je Zen Cho now I've heard about Zen Cho but I'd never heard of Blackwater Sister until it popped up on script and the 
The tagline alone got me. It said, a stressed millennial lesbian fights gods, gangsters, gods, gangsters, ghosts, and grandmas in 21st century Penang. <laughs> I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm sold. This sounds great. Like, I am way, I'm really, really looking for queer romance as much as uh, queer romance. Queer fantasy, because it's a genre that I love, and it's not that often that we get queer characters in this. So I'm super excited to try out a queer fantasy and like a zillennial lesbian fighting ghosts. Sick. Sounds right up my alley. <laughs> um, the last book that I have on script that I would like to get to, but I'm not sure we'll see, is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Um, Again, if you've been on booktube, you've heard about this book. This book is like really did the rounds last year when it came out and it was a, I mean, it was a level hate, I think, but it sounds like the type of book that I would really love. There's body horror, there's queerness, there's, there's basically an island where there's this all girls school on this island and some kind of disease breaks out, a little bit real, um, and starts to change these girls bodies. And, um, one of the girls goes missing and they need to find her. And there's a queer romance built into that so that one i ugh, see i want to get to all of these i keep saying i definitely want to get to them but there's only so much time in the month my little eyes can only do so much <laughs> and i'm making a lot of content this month so we'll see what i actually get to um if you guys are participating in the queer lit realism let me know it's definitely one that is worth uh participating in and their bingo board is so cute i've got it written in my bullet journal so i can color in as many squares as i want and it basically just like gets us to read as queerly as possibly uh, as we possibly can so if you're participating let me know are you reading gaily this month what is on your tbr please tell me what your favorite queer books are because i'm always looking for recommendations and that would be that would be fantastic um so if you liked this video, please consider giving me a like, hitting the subscribe, and tickling my bell for notifications. If you want to in, uh, support my channel in any way, you can support me on Coffee. It's my little virtual tip jar. The link will be down below. Um, and yeah, I will see you very soon in my next super gay video. <laughs> and until then, I'll take you next time.